Hello everyone, welcome back. We are here with what will be round seven of the Dallas Regional Championships. I'm Nick Pierce, I'm here with Michael Slutsky. How are you doing? I'm good, I'm good. I'm excited for this one. We, uh, we're kind of getting into the important rounds here of the tournament. Um, we've got Blaine Hill at 6-0 versus John Eng at 6-0. Yep. Um, we've got another match of 6-0 squaring off. And then Thane, who we showed earlier, is also 6-0. So uh, at the end of this round, we could have three possible 7-0s. The winner of this match, uh, well, actually, even if they tie, yes. is a lock for day two. Yeah, of course. So, so uh, the 19 match points is, of course, the minimum was hit that you were in day two guaranteed. They sort of changed the system recently. Yep. So, yep. of course, neither of these players want to settle for a tie. No, of uh, Going not. into day two, um, you know, with 21 match points versus uh, 19 match points is advantageous. But just the more wins you can get on the first day, the easier your path to top eight is going to be tomorrow. Yeah, exactly. Go in with 24 match points, say eight wins. You'll only need, you know, two wins and an ID versus mm -hmm. three or four wins. So yeah. um, you want to make your day two journey into top eight as easy as possible, basically. Yeah. Both of these players, obviously, no stranger to that. Uh, they both have a ton of accomplishments here. Um, as far as decks go, um, this is uh, something that we've seen actually a little bit in this tournament. Um, Blaine is playing that uh, ever popular Drampa Garb, whereas John is playing the Zorak Garbodor. Yes. Uh, a deck we've seen pop up recently. So, uh, what do you think about this match? Um, I, I, it's kind of it's an interesting one because uh, this uh, this Drampa Garbodor list is actually playing a little bit of an interesting tech. It's playing the Sigilyph GX. So, yeah. this, of course, uh, has that ability where if it's hit by an EX or GX Pokemon, it does the same damage back yep. to whatever hits it. So. You know, if uh, John Eng does like a big Zorak hit into a Sigilyph and again he get hits back for something, um, you'll finish off that way. I honestly, I'm struggling to call this one just because they're both decks obviously strong inherently in their own right. Um, yep. Zorak can probably dig one hit knockouts more easily than than the Dramper can. Uh, obviously, if John plays too many items, then Garbodor can come in. So there's a lot of factors in play that can affect how this matchup actually plays out. Yeah, definitely. Um, we uh, he actually runs two copies of that Sigilyph GX, so that'll be interesting to see uh, if he uses them at all and how he uses them. Um, it looks like we are getting started here <coughs> with round seven. Um, John will start with a Klefki, and he will bridge it. And now he's checking his deck. Yeah, it's a pretty strong start, no matter which we look at it. Not even having to tap Lele for it. Uh, we're going to have a look. Imagine just probably grab a few Zoras, if nothing else. Yep. Um, he Maybe a Trubbish is fine, too. Um, double Zora Trubbish. Uh, yep. One thing he has to be, a strategy that the Drampa Garb decks often utilize is uh, <coughs> using Righteous Edge plus Parallel City plus Garbotoxin to really just limit any option that Zorak has. So, yeah, it's a, very, um, it's a very common play for them because obviously these Zorak decks do rely on the Zorak for that trade engine, you know, just to be able to draw so many cards uh, in, in, each, uh, in each turn. But uh, if the Garbatoxin turns it off and then you also get rid of their energy, then they're kind of left stuck and they relying on supporters for draw instead. Yeah, so it looks like he takes double Zorua and a Trubbish. Uh, I don't hate this. Um, Trubbish, obviously. He can get his own Garbatoxin online if he wants. Uh, or he can just have access to Trash Lanch yeah. to Ooh. fight one prizes. And it looks like he hits Blaine with a red card on the first turn. Uh, it's pretty strong. So, of course, Blaine from the very get-go is going to be limited to starting with uh, four cards in hand, five after he draws for turn. And uh, that's really... Turn one is always, like, always the best time to see a red card, just because you know it's going to put your opponent on the back foot immediately. Yeah. So, it looks like John passes after that red card, I believe. Yep. And uh, now it's Blaine. Blaine does have a sport. He's got an N and an energy. So this is already a pretty good good uh, response. Yep. And Blaine, what he wants now, at least one Trubbish. Um, more Trubbish is obviously good, but he'd certainly like at least just one. He looks like he, so he did actually have the Sigil of GX in his hand. Opted not to bench it, probably thinking, well, if John's going to get a Garbatoxin online anyway, that this doesn't really do much for me in this matchup. So probably there's no really point in really using it. I imagine it's probably more in there for stuff like Rayquaza GX, where obviously they're always taking they one-hit knockout on you, so then you take a one-hit knockout back, and so you're always sort of even in that sense. Yep, and then he can attack himself on his turn. He does find a Mysterious Treasure, gets rid of a Guzma, so he will find that Trubbish. Um... He's going to be looking through his deck here, obviously, but uh, I can imagine Trubbish is the primary target. Yep, because, of course, uh, either for Trash Lanch or for uh, Garbatoxin, it's just you want to get those out as quickly as you can. It's interesting. We see a little bit of a resurgence of Drampa Garb at this event. It's a deck that's kind of fallen by the wayside a little bit. It struggles to... to, to 
to control Zork a lot of the time. Zork can go over the top of it really easily. Yeah. Um, and control Zork obviously has a, has a lot of options for it. But uh, Blaine, you know, I think he realizes just how strong Garbotoxin yeah. and Righteous Edge can be. So It's, it's one that's always uh, been weird as far as uh, I see it because... It, Drampa Garbot is a deck that, it, it, it always seems like it's more than the sum of its parts. Like, in terms of everything that it does, it's nothing, it's not never really doing anything that crazy. It's kind of maybe doing some reactive attacks with Trash Alange, it's slowing the opponent down a little bit. Berserk is a pretty good attack, but it never seems like, you know, when you look at it on paper, that it's like, wow, this deck is completely blows it away. But every single time, it just keeps getting good results. Yeah. Um, so we see Blaine put down the Parallel City, and then he uses Drampa GX's Big Wheel GX to shuffle his hand in and draw uh, 10 cards. Very strong GX tech. John, of course, has the perfect response with an N. He'll need to find a Skyfield, and he does. he runs three copies of Skyfield, but Blaine does run a full four copies of Parallel City. Wow. He wants to ensure he can lock the opposing bench size to three against Zork every single game. Yeah, that's obviously pretty strong. If you're able to if you play four parallel city, you're pretty much almost always winning the stadium war. And if you can just get that to stick, then you're going to be setting yourself up well, no matter which way you look at it. But it looks like John missed off of that end. Yeah, he does still have access to his trade, and he did get another Zork off of this end. So he will be able to still maybe bail his way out of it. He needs to find a float stone as well for the Klepki. Oh, and the Skyfield. Amazing top deck there from John off of the trade, and so he will now be able to replace the Parallel City and start benching some more stuff. He's got the second Zorark as well, like you already said. So this is actually already looking a lot better. He just needs to find a Float Stone now, really. Yeah, I wouldn't play that Skyfield just yet. I think he's eyeing the Ditto to trade. It's unfortunate Ditto will go to the Lost Zone, and he does opt to trade the Ditto. I think Lele is another card in his hand. Yeah. He's a second Lele. He does not find what he wants as far as a float stone. So I think maybe he'll just hold this sky field. Yeah, he doesn't. If he can't get an attack of the turn, there's probably not much point in playing it right now, although maybe he disagrees. Oh, never mind. He's opting to go for it. Using Tapu Lele, Wonder Tag for the chorus. He cannot play chorus because he did play N. Yeah. I think maybe he. Realizes that, well, I don't know. He's but probably just doing it preemptively, maybe thinking to himself, I'd rather have the chance in case I get end again. If I just play the Skyfield now, get my Tapu Lele down, yep. then it, it kind of forces the end even way. But then if he doesn't, I have the support already. Yep. This also forces Blaine to try and find another parallel. And it looks like John has just passed to Blaine. So yep. I uh, find Blaine more. Trubbish is always good. Maybe another Drampa with an energy on that as well. I don't think he really cares to take a knockout on this Klepki. And if he does, he strands all of his energy on the Drampa. He's going to play Bridget here. There's that Trebish. Oh, and there's Pseudo Udo. Oh, that's a big deal. So yeah. that will limit uh, John's damage output for the rest of his game unless he's able to get his Garbatoxin online. Um, and obviously that's going to, at the very least, it's going to force him to discard something. Just discard the tap of the other straight away. Yep. Yeah, starting this Klefki is a little unfortunate for John. It doesn't do anything. And he needs to, he would still need to either pay to retreat it, or attach a float stone, or Guzma. So, yep. Lane has a couple turns here to try and set up a board to fight this game. He does. And uh, John there having to read what Sigil of GX does. <laughs> thinking like, wait, what? What on earth am I even looking at right now? Yep. <laughs> yeah, I think this might be the first recorded instance of Sigilyph GX seeing uh, competitive play, at least at a regionals, I, to my knowledge. I, it is the same to my knowledge as well. I've not, not seen any play in Europe either, as far as I'm aware. <laughs> yeah. So it looks like uh, Blaine will take the N with Tapu Lele. He does have a Wobbuffet in his hand, I believe. It's just maybe burning these cards. Attaches to the other Drampa. Yep. And opts to just Righteous Edge. So I think he's holding the end. Figures if John's going to go big with the Colrus, then he can limit him next turn. Yeah. I imagine that must be what he's thinking as well. Another double colors goes down onto the bench Zora. Um, then Chorus after that. Really Interesting that he, he had a Zorak GX in his hand and he didn't choose to evolve that. 
I'm not uh -huh. sure why that was. Does he run? No, he, oh, he does run uh, one stand-in Zorark. So oh. he actually could knock out this Drampa here with a stand-in, and there's the Ultra Ball. Wow, okay. So he trades the Garbodor. This is, this could be this could be pretty big. Yeah, really good. He that will be enough to knock out the Drempa because uh, Mind Jack does ten plus thirty for each of your opponent's bench Pokemon, so he will be able to do hundred and ninety. Yes, he will. To this Drempa, Blaine definitely did not expect this. This is a card that we saw a long time ago, a couple seasons ago. It was very powerful. But it kind of fell out of favor. Yeah, very much so. Like it was, we actually even saw like a few Zorark lists. If they did opt for like another Zorark, they'd even play like, the foul play one, yep. just like copy some attacks. But yep. John Eng going with the standing one here, and uh, clearly it's uh, been a good decision for him. Yeah, definitely. That's that's definitely something else, Blaine. I don't think he expected this card. You know, very few people do. It's it has great utility in the mirror, and now Blaine has to. You know, now John doesn't care about the fact that Sudowu doesn't play because Blaine has to deal with the fact that this Zork is uh, is kind of beating his face. Yeah, in exactly. Right now. Not only that, but uh, currently, uh, even with that double colors on the active, Berserk is only doing 80 damage. There's no real way for Blaine to get damage on his own stuff without attaching a rainbow, and he's already done his energy for the turn. Yep. Uh, he runs three copies of Choice Band. Sometimes they used to run, actually, when these two decks were both in the standard meta uh, two years ago, uh, sometimes the Drempa Garbs would play a Muscle Band so that they could uh, deal with deal with this sort of thing. Uh, and and they certainly have played it in Expanded. Mm -hmm. So I Blaine certainly doesn't run it now. Yeah, that's, uh, I don't think that's definitely a case of Zorok. I don't think uh, Muscle Band and Drampa were ever legal in Standard at the same time. Oh, yeah, sorry, <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. Uh, Expanded they were when, when yeah. uh, this deck was popularized last year in Dallas. Yeah. They did run yeah. Muscle Band, I believe. Very, so. very much so. Looks like he plays a parallel to respond to that Skyfield. If I'm John, maybe I discard just the Klefki. I don't think I really... Oh, he, he actually discarded his own side, so he pitched himself down to three. Oh, okay. And he uses Righteous Edge, so... A little less good. Zork, that, that Zork BKT is a little less good now, but John's still in a pretty solid board position here. Yeah. It, it, it was a pretty cool call for Blaine to you know, play the parallel, the other side facing him, just to lower his bench, own bench size to stop the Zorark from doing as much damage. Yeah. He does have a Psychic Energy and an Ultra Ball. So he has the potential to, you know, propagate, discard the, the egg, discard something else, grab a Trubbish, attach an Energy, then attach the Klefki to that Garbodor and activate Trash Lanch for a turn while he takes a knockout on, say, that Sudowoodo or one of those two Trubbish. Yeah, uh, yeah. There's uh, definitely there's options available to him. It's just a matter of deciding which one's the best one to take. There's he, with a Guzmer in hand. There's multiple different knockouts he can go for. He's gonna he is playing it, but what's he gonna go for? I think I would maybe target down one of the Trubbish. That way, it forces Blaine to have to choose between getting the Garbotoxin online or getting a Trash Lance to attack with. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Especially because you know, Blaine play, is playing so many oh. Parallel City anyway that getting rid of the Pseudo Widow, it doesn't really. I, I don't think it makes too much of a difference here, but I guess, again, John disagrees and just goes to the knockout on the Pseudo Widow. Ops to knock out the Pseudo Widow, which is, of course, fine. That means he won't need to attach a tool to Garbodor to you know reactivate uh, the ability to have more than four bench. Yeah. The parallel side is sticking opposite right now, so... Yeah. Maybe th they, that's why John did it, actually, because he's thinking Blaine had to like field blow his own stadium and then play another one to make the parallel face the other way, so actually that makes Sudowoodo getting rid of it more impactful in this particular instance. Yeah. There's the floatstone. I don't know how many items were in John's discard, but it looks like Blaine is forced to use Trubbish's uh, garbage collection. <laughs> yeah. Puts a card from your discard pile on top of your deck. He puts an N there, but this is kind of showing that his hand is very weak. And John potentially has an opportunity to, you know, if he could say knock out that Drampa this turn, he has the opportunity to pretty much run away with the game here. Yeah, exactly. Because like, if it comes to that point where, you know, it just, um, 
well, you know that your opponent's just going to be drawing an end, but you also you've only got one prize left, so literally any knockout you take wins the game. Yep. At that point, Blaine's just way too behind to be able to win the match, win the game rather. Yep. At the same time, John is maybe cognizant of the N Trashalanche, or I'm sorry, N Garbotoxin parallel, you know, Righteous Edge combo. Yeah. So he uses Battle Compressor to discard a delinquent and an egg. I think that Blaine has more than three cards in his hand. Yeah. Yeah, especially because actually thinking about it, if you just um, if you just take a K on the Trubbish here, you know you're going to get end anyway, and that way you get end to two, mm -hmm. and that way Ultra Ball is still an out to it, and that's probably just better 100% of the time. So. Yep. He's eyeing the Sky Field. I don't see... Oh, there might be a VS Seeker in his hand, actually. Take that back way yeah. down there. <laughs> it is just, it's just, just, that, just that debate of is he... You He's going to play the Ultra Ball for free, but he does have the double egg to propagate. Most players understand yeah. what that means. So he does take a Trubbish, and he does have the Psychic Energy, oh, so he'll okay. be able to attach that and set that up for next turn. He's got the Oranguru as well, just uh, well, because why not, right? He also doesn't need any sort of Floatstone or Retreat mechanic because he can stand in with the Zork and then Guzma back to this attacking Zork GX. Yeah, exactly. That just helps as well. Nora Corey for good measure. Choice band. Putting, he's he's just burning. I think as many cards as he can. He's gonna knock out this Drampa. I think, but he just wants as few cards as possible. Yep, we see the stand in. Yeah, so he is he is going it for this round. He's just gonna take knock out on Drampa straight away. Sort of trying to make it the best of both worlds because, like you said, he's burning lots of cards. So he, this way he can like take the care on the Drampa, but also make it so that when he does get end to one, he's more likely to draw out of it, especially because he has access to trades. Yep. So he does attach that energy to the Trubbish now. So next turn, if he finds a Trash and Lanch Garbodor, that is pretty much an out to win the game. Yeah. We see the end come down. Blaine attaches two Choice Band. I don't know how many items are in John's discard. So I don't know if Trash and Lanch with this Choice Band will knock it out. But I think one... Uh, he's going too fast. I don't know if there's... Let's see, he would need... 10 items in there yeah. plus the choice band. And Blaine gets a trash lanch, oh, but... No Garbatoxin. I think that's basically game over as far no, as I'm concerned. Yeah, yeah he Blaine, just scoops. Yep, picks him up. Realizes that John got a little too far ahead. Yeah. Uh, that uh, stand-in Zork, the Mindjack Zork, is such a, such a good tech for, for John to be yep. running. That's oh. great in any Zork mirror. It was super good there. I mean, it, him playing that was what basically sealed his lead in that game because yep. sort of out of nowhere, he was able to just produce a KO, which mm -hmm. meant he was always just running away from that point, just kind of snowballed. Yeah, so now Blaine has to be cognizant of, I can't use John Skyfield, and he had to limit his own bench with the parallel, which is like, that's definitely not what you want to be doing. No, exactly. So, And he, he honestly started pretty good. He had an energy, he big wheeled, he had Trubbish down, but... You know, you see just the power of... You see kind of why Drampa faded a little bit. It's because even though it's built to beat Zork, sometimes Zork is just too strong. Yeah, exactly. And that's um, and this is time and time again why Zork has always just made its way to the top tables. It's just, you know, your consistency with trades and uh, especially the expanded, the extra options you have with the different uh, techs you have and including, in this case, uh, Stan and Zorark. Just so many options to handle different situations. Yeah, so John, of course, up one game, one game away from sealing his day two spot, cuts one card from the top of Blaine's deck, yep. an elite cut, only the best for these players. <laughs> and we will see if Blaine can muster a little bit better of a fight yeah. in this second game. I, I've, I've done the w the one card cut on a few people before. It's, uh, <laughs> I don't know, so, sometimes it just feels right. <laughs> it's a mind game. Yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> so if I'm Blaine, honestly, you know, I think repeating that same start would be great. Uh, just maybe attacking a little more. Yeah. With Berserk, trying to get that going. Yeah, that, I, I don't think he didn't really Berserk at all that game, did he? He did right to edge a few times, but other than that, not really making the most out of the Drampa, just really using big wheel and yeah, right to edge. He needs to, I think, apply a little bit more pressure so that John so that his, his Righteous Edging turns are more powerful. Yes. Because otherwise, right now, uh, he's kind of playing from behind. So he'll Righteous Edge, but John can just attach again and keep going. So 
He'll need to try and establish a little bit more control this game, and he does that by starting off with a Lele for Bridget for Drampa, Trubbish, and yeah. Sudo. I believe he does have a double colorless in his hand as well. Yes, he does. He does. So that's a good attach. Yeah, this already seems like a pretty strong start. I think, again, the Sudo, the game of Sudo Wudo out early is really sensible because obviously he didn't have access to Parallel City, so he just gets Sudo Wudo out and just already put a little bit of a dampener on what, how far John can go this turn. Yep. So, yeah, pretty good start from Blaine. John responds with a raw Bridget from hand. Looks like he's going to Bridget for double Zerua Trubbish. I think I only saw two Zerua in his deck. Nope, there's oh. a third one. Okay. So I thought maybe he prized. I think he meta prized one of them. Uh, uh, I think you're right, actually, the first time. I think, I, I think he's prized both of them. I only see two no, in there. No, there, there is one. I did see the, the, the third one in oh, there. Okay, that's, so it is only just one. All right. Yeah. I mean, either way, it doesn't affect his Bridget too much, I guess, because you normally just go for two Zoras and a Trubbish anyway, so right. that's fine. He is going to now play the Lele and use Wonder Tech for this Chorus. I think he's just taking the Chorus. Obviously, he can't play it right now, but he just wants to show Blaine, you know, I'm next turn. It doesn't matter what you do. I'm yeah. prepared to go off yeah. here. Be so. Because there is a chance that Blaine just goes, evolves to Garbatoxin, floats Stone in, and all of a sudden that Tapu Lele is not doing anything. And uh, look, he's always there already, practically. Yeah, there it is. He touches a choice band to Garb. Not the tool you want, but he needs to just set up the ability lock as soon as possible. John does only run one copy of Field Blower. He does have a dowsing machine, so he'll be able to use it twice, but... Yeah, but well, look at his start already from Blaine so much stronger. Like, another double colorless, uh, you attach that to the Dramper and just go for the Berserk for 80, setting up to the potential two shot for next turn if you can find a choice band or just something to damage his bench. Yep, a lot more aggressive this time around. He does play a parallel as well, so he knocks out one of John's Lele. John discards the Lele, but more importantly, he will not be able to play any of these additional basics, so his chorus will be limited now to just seven. Exactly. It's really not an ideal situation for him, and there we see, like, yeah, He's there is indeed eyeing the other Zora, But he can't play that down because no, uh, Blaine's can't. blue side parallel is in play, so we'll need to make sure that uh, he doesn't draw uh, an, additional, an additional card off this chorus for eight, so we'll just make sure that uh, oh, he played the Skyfield. Oh, now he played the Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he played the Skyfield, and I think he did it the wrong way around. But he, okay. yeah. All right. Never mind. Problem avoided. Yep. Thank goodness so for that. If he can find a field blower here now, he has a, the potential to go off here. But he does, he does find a uh, double. So he'll be able to hit this Drampa for 120, which is still quite strong. Yeah. He actually had a choice. He had a choice band in hand. So if he had like some way to do an extra twenty damage, he actually could have. Uh, what is it? An extra thirty damage. He could have One actually shot taken it. a knockout there. Yeah, I think not attaching the choice band is good. He realizes he's not going to knock it out. So yeah. no reason to. Yeah. If you, if you can't take the one shot, there's no point attaching it to the lele. Do that. But if Blaine has, he has another double. His hand is oh, okay. There is an end. Yeah. But he does have an N. If he finds a choice band, he'll be able to knock out this uh, Tapu Lele. He does run three copies of it, so there is a chance he does find it. We'll see. Obviously, he would also like another parallel to discard some of those Zeruas. He does not find, I think, either of those cards. Oh, brutal. Which is, yeah, actually not that good. And because Blaine has a tool on his Garbotoxin, Sudowoodo is deactivated. Which yes, means it that is. Blaine, if he can manually draw the Pokemon, still has the ability. Ah, never mind. We do see another parallel come down. Yeah, so that's pretty good. Uh, forces John to discard a couple of things. And yeah, it looks like actually just decides, you know what? I don't. I'm not going to make use of Trubbish this game. Or is he deciding that's actually wrong? I think he realizes he won't get use out of Trubbish right now. He would rather have the potential to, say, top deck a field blower and mm -hmm. go off with as many Zorak as possible. Yeah. yeah. So oh, and actually, I just realized that uh, John actually didn't prize any of his Zorak. He had four down just then. He did, yeah. yeah. So I guess we must have just missed it. Yeah. Yeah, either way, uh, Righteous Edge uh, comes down since obviously Berserk can't pick up the 
the and can't do enough damage to pick up the two hit knockout. Just softening up with the right edge and getting rid of the double colorless works out better. Now. John is also he also has the other Zorik in play or in his hand, the stand-in Zorik that we saw him knock out a clean Drample with. So if he can find a choice band and a float stone off of this, or a field blower and a choice band, he will be able to knock out this clean Drampa, which he may be eyeing. He does have a, a chorus in there. Oh, he's eyeing Guzma, maybe. Well, if he, if he has a double colorless, then he can just, which he does, he can actually just take the KO on the, the non damage one. Yeah. Yep. I think he's eyeing that. He also might want to take out the Garbotoxin, yes. which would, because jo because Blaine only has one Garbodor in play and no Trubbish, it would guarantee that John would have turns of abilities, which is how yeah. Zorik really gets on top. Exactly, of. and I'm sure that's the exact debate that's going through his mind right now, which one he'd rather KO. But he can't KO the Garbodor right now. He needs another Pokemon. Well, he does have Skyfield and a Pokemon and an yeah. Ultra on his hand, actually, so he could do that, but he's also... If he, say, knocks out that Drampa with this Zork, with the stand in Mind Jack Zork, he is still impervious to being knocked out because Blaine would only be able to do 80. Yes, exactly. So he can also just Mind Jack the Garbodor. But he opts to take the damage off of Blaine's board, yeah. figuring that he could still knock out the next Zork, or the next Drampa. Yeah. In, yeah, I think I actually quite like this because now the way the energy is scattered on Blaine's board, it's going to be almost impossible for him to get damage or something onto the bench as well as, you know, do enough of Berserk to... Uh, uh, attached to do Berserk at the same time. There's no... As far as I'm aware, Blaine isn't playing any other damaging cards. Yeah, they used to run copies of Team Magma Base yes. and then copies of Potown, but they have since abandoned those in favor of Parallel City because of the utility that that provides. So the only way he can attach to, or he can put damage on his board himself is his one copy of Rainbow Energy, which he won't be able to take advantage of this turn. Yeah, there's there's no multi switch either, so you can't like attach to Lele and multi switch to the active. Yep. So yep. There's basically no way for him to get KO Berserk this turn. Is what we're saying. Yeah. So I mean, of course he can Righteous Edge, and that'll be two doubles gone for John. But he's in a position where he needs to he needs a little bit more than that. And if he puts this Drampa active, he is in possible danger of losing losing this Drampa if John can find a field. Oh, very, much so. So. very much so, because, I mean, he might not be able to... Oh, actually, now there's something else on the bench. I was going to say he had to, John had to dig for a KO to Zorak GX, but now that uh, Blaine's put something else on the bench again, it's even possible for him to just KO a stand-in if he finds the choice band and double colorless replacement. We do see a knockout on the... Oh, I'm sorry, a Righteous Edge on the Zorak there, so he will now <coughs> need to find another double colorless and a choice band again. But if he does, he can one-shot this clean Drampa. So yes. And that's going to be a dousing machine for a Chorus. Dousing machine for the Chorus. If he can find that Field Blower, he's really got a chance to take over this game here. Yeah, no, it's interesting how he opted to discard uh, the Execute and uh, the Trash Lance. Yeah, well, the Trash Lance makes sense because there's no Trubbishes out, but you might think he might just want to bench the Execute and the Shaman just to draw more Chorus, even though the bench liability is, at this point, you just want to make sure you see the Field Blower. Certainly, yeah. Or even if you don't see the Field Blower, just, you know, the fact that they're two extra basics that you have, that means that you're that much closer to the KO with, um, with Zorark. With Zorark GX. Yeah, yeah, if that's an, an option that you want to go for. Yep, so we'll see what he gets off it. Again, the things he needs the most are Double Colors and Choice Band. If he can hit those, he'll just take a knockout regardless. I don't see it in there, and I don't... No, it's a big this miss. actually an ugly course for eight. None of these cards are really terribly useful for John. Yeah, that's really, really bad. Not what he wants to see in the slightest. Yeah. Uh, oof. That's brutal. And it, it's funny because, I mean, he's still not out of this game, right? There's, uh, although he didn't see where he needed this turn, there's still a possibility for him to dig for a KO next turn with, uh, if he finds, because I mean, you have to assume that this Skyfield's going to go away to another Parallel City next turn. Yep. So then if John just finds another Skyfield and just benches a bunch of Pokemon and finds a double colorless, he can still take the KO on the Dramper if he's able to find eight on the bench. Certainly, yeah. But and and he's only giving up one prize with this Mind Jack. Yes, exactly. He just he needs to not let Blaine get 
ahead on tempo and control the game. That's how Drampa wins these games. It eventually gets on top of you. Yeah. So. Yeah, and we saw the game one. That was how John won. He didn't let that happen. He was just, you know, constantly pouncing on any opportunity Blaine had and uh, was able to take control of the game. Now it seems like control might be slipping a bit more into Blaine's favor. John passes with the lone troubleshoot play. If Blaine plays a parallel again, he'll just discard the damage. Lele, so not something John is too upset about, but Blaine only has a double colorless in his hand, and that's his fourth double colorless. Because remember, he had two on the other Drampa as well. He did, well. yeah, that's right. So if John can take out this Drampa, that's, that other Drampa on the bench only has a rainbow. So it will not be able to knock out, it'll not be able to start swinging with Berserk at all. Uh, apologies if you hear that background noise there. I think there's something hype happening on the VGC side, clearly. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> a little more hype than, uh, than what we've got going on here. Yeah. But we see Blaine with the computer search. Probably he's eyeing, a, it looks like he's eyeing a Trubbish. I think he realizes it's time to start getting Trash Lanch going. Mm -hmm. But there's yep. a parallel. There so goes the Lele. Easy discard for John. Definitely. And I don't know how many items are in Blaine's discard, so I don't know how much Trash Lance will do, but John rips a VS Seeker Whoa. off the top. Easy money. He's eyeing that super out as well. That's a card we also don't see in Zork too often. A lot of times they run Rescue Stretcher because it can target specific cards like, say, a Zork or something or a Trash Lance. But I think John, you know, he only runs one Psychic Energy. So that's likely why he's running the Super Rod. Yeah, because he, he wants to make sure that he, if he needs to attack a Trash Lance more than once, he has the option to do so. Right. We see a Chorus for... Eight again. John, of course, needs to find preferably a field blower so he can start going off here. Yep. But a double colors for sure. I don't see the field blower there, which is so unfortunate. Wow. Does he does he have like a double colorless and enough basics just to take the KO at least? I don't think he has. I don't see. He's got plenty of basics, but I do not see a. Double, colors. double. And he's looking at his deck right now. There's one double left, but there's no field blower. Uh, uh, it is the. Uh, I saw him. It's, I saw him walk through earlier. That's uh, a floatstone, I think. No, no, it is. Um, it was. It was definitely in there. It was. Uh, okay. It was a bit just like before the floatstone, but he, well, it, it doesn't matter anyway. He's not drawn it, so that's all that really matters. Yeah. Um. I also don't know how many parallel are gone. I think that's the third parallel. Mm. Might be the. Might be the second one, but got a ditto down as well. Ditto, of course, would not be able to use the Almighty Evolution ability as long as Garbotoxin is nope. active. But oh, just goes for the end straight away. Off the top. Blaine probably wants to find an energy, uh, psychic energy, or so he can attach to that Trubbish. We see a Floatstone and a Guzma. No parallel, though. Oh, that's, a, that's a big miss, actually. This that, yeah. gives John an opportunity to maybe pull something back. Yeah, because Berserk will do 180, which is not enough. Of course, he does have Oracorio, so he can later take a knockout. But yeah. Oh, there's the field blower. Oh, off the top of the deck! Oh, here we go. It's time for some money here with Zork. There's at least two eggs in the discard. He trades once. There's the double. He's got a choice band as well. He has a float stone, so he can save this Zork if he wants as well. An, oh, this is money. That is an unbelievable draw from John. Yeah. Literally could not have asked for anything better. And now he should be able to, in theory, just bench enough Pokemon to take knockout in his Drampa. There's, an eggs, there's eggs in his discard pile. He's got access to Pokemon. He trades again. Yep. Puts another Zerua down. He's got it. He's definitely got it. He also has a VS Seeker. I don't know how many VS Seeker he's used yet, but if he if that's not his fourth one, he has the ability to Colrus still to draw even more. He got, oh boy. He's got the double colorless as well. He's, this, he's got it all. This could be big. I don't know how many double colorless are in the discard. I think it's just two. I, I think so as well. I think he, so, he should have two left, including the one in his hand. Something he also needs to be cognizant of here he needs to be able to get this trubbish down oh he has the trubbish okay as i was gonna say because he needs to be able to attack next turn in case yeah. he doesn't get the double off of his prizes exactly and it looks like he's gonna go big with this damage yeah. zork i don't get 
I don't get why he's agonizing over so much exactly. He's got one egg in discard pile. Maybe he's got two, actually. Yeah. Maybe he's, he's just counting, seeing... He's got the KO guaranteed. That's, that's no question about that. He's got eggs. He's got enough basics in his hand. He's got the double colorless. Yeah. Uh, he's doing some calculations here. He puts the egg back. He might not be... So I think he does not have the... That's his last VS Seeker, because if it was, he would likely... Oh, he's going to attach a float to his own. Oh, interesting. That is interesting. Yeah. Oh, wait, no, of course he has to because the pseudo widow's in play. Oh, that's right. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. I yeah, completely missed that. Yeah, so, okay, so that was why he was agonizing his over. He wanted to make well, sure. Well, I'm, I'm just thinking why he didn't attach the cleft key and put another egg on the bench because that way the, the Garbotoxin would lose its would lose the tool so then he could get access to trade next turn, but I guess I, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Oh, there's the psychic energy. I think he ripped that off the prizes. So that's pretty big. He is closing in on a victory here. If I'm Blaine, I need to find a Garbodor and another Trubbish, I think. Hmm. He's out of double, so he won't be able to attack with his Drampa. No. Other than Righteous Edge. He could, of course, knock out this Zork with Righteous Edge if he finds a Choice Band. Yeah, he could. That might be what he's even just going for. That's super odd. Yeah, get back, yeah, just Lele, Drampa, and Psychic. Mysterious Treasure 2 just to get the Lele straight back. And he Go. discards the Guzma. He takes the Lele, but he... Oh, maybe he's choosing to take something else. Oh, he's probably going to go for Trash Lunch, I imagine. Yep. So he's eyeing Trash Lunch over the Tapu Lele. But he's also... Let's see, how many prizes is he at? He's at... That's like five or five four. No, no, that's five, five, yeah. So... Oh. How many Pokemon are in... There's only a couple Pokemon. Never mind. It's not many. Yeah. So he'll chorus here. So he'll be able to take a couple prizes at least. Uh, likely yeah. on the egg and this yeah. active Zora. Yeah. Oh, intense shaky cam is activated again. Things are getting a little bit too too heated in this, uh, in this battle yeah. right now, clearly. Somebody's shaking. <laughs> Maybe it's John. Maybe John's a little excited. I don't Maybe. know. Maybe. We're all along for the ride here. Yeah, exactly. He's counting. There is a parallel in his hand. It's another one. He's putting all these cards down, and he's going to parallel likely to pitch the cards he doesn't care about. That Lele. Maybe even the Drampa. Yeah. Yep. Because yep, he, he realizes he can't berserk at all. Yep. And also, it's a it's a GX liability. Yeah, and it's actually it's a double benefit because he can get rid of some of his useless stuff and also again limit John's bench. So pretty strong going. John is going to discard some stuff. So maybe he chooses to discard his own Garbodor in addition to the Ditto and the Egg. I think so because you because yeah you don't really get any well much value out of it anymore other than maybe using it as a free retreat pivot with the float stone but even that could it's just a fuel blow away from not being the case so uh he's putting them into his hand oh never mind okay looked like he had them in his hand yeah there's two of them he needs to yeah he still needs to get rid of two more things it's gonna be Klefki and Zora it looks like so he actually just decided that keeping garb is worthwhile so now there's how many Pokemon in the discard? One, two, three, six, nine, yeah. ten. Oh, and of course, that's the other the other benefit of the Oricoria as well is that, it, it, or rather, the other benefit of the Parallel City is that not only does it limit John's bench, but it also means that Oricoria does more damage. Yep. And so now Blaine has put John in a position where, because he has exactly ten, he will be able to knock out the Zork and the Trubbish, which leaves John with just one Zork GX. But John doesn't have another double colorless, so he'll need to find another Trubbish. And he's at a Field Blower. And he's at a Dazzling Machine. So this was actually a very smart play by Blaine. Yeah, a really, really insane turn of events there uh, for him. Just a really, really clever uh, line of play as well. Nine in the discard right now for John. 
There's the psychic, like I mentioned earlier, but that's not going to help him right now. Ultra Ball, does he have the access to the one? No, the other double colors isn't there. I don't believe there's another Trubbish in the There is an Oranguru, though. That could be good. He'll be able to recycle, you know, Trubbishes and yeah. Skyfields. The Field Blower and the Dowsing Machine as well. Mm -hmm. But will that be too little too late? Because, I mean, Blaine just takes another KO uh, if if John does that. And then <laughs> and then what does John do? Because he can take a KO back and then that's kind of doesn't really... Again, the tempo is now back in Blaine's favor. Yeah, especially because John has so many items in his discard. Trash Hands is just begging to, to go in here. And he looks like he's going to via Seeker as well. Probably for the... Oh, I was going to say for the end, but no, it's going to be Chorus. That's interesting. I would have maybe held the VS Seeker and just used a Ranguru. There's so few cards left in his deck that are actually useful to him right now, I believe. So yeah. Oh, he does have an Orcario of his own, actually. That's interesting. He does. Do we know how many Pokemon are in Blaine's discard? I don't believe we do. It's definitely not as much as John has. I mean, you have a look now. See, one... Yeah, it's the, like the Dreva less. decks don't usually, they're just so good at being a little bit more efficient, yeah. I guess. It, it's a very sort of conservative sort of deck in terms of what it does. It doesn't try to be like very flashy in what it does. It doesn't use huge amounts of Pokemon or anything like that. It just grinds through games. Yeah, very scrappy. Yeah. Um, John is eyeing the Orangaroo. He's going to retreat. I don't know what he takes back. Maybe items... Just so that Trash Lance does less damage. Yeah. Probably a couple basics. The Trubbish, the Zerua. Maybe even Pokemon, so Oricorio puts less damage counters on stuff. Yeah, he also uh, perhaps wants to put one of those double colorless back in. Yeah. He can only take three, so he needs to make these three count. Because yeah. Orangaroo is likely dead after this yeah. attack. I think it's going to have to be uh, definitely one double colorless, like you said. Uh, yeah, that's, that's a no-brainer. There's one. And maybe actually you just get back two Pokemon because I think there was eleven in John in um, John's discard pile before, which is why he was able to, you know, which is why Blaine was able to do so much with the Oricorio. But oh no, actually maybe oh no, of course now with the KO, there's even more in there. So no, even if John got back free Pokemon with resource management, Oricorio could still get the KO on Garb. So actually, yeah, it just makes more sense to go for the two double colorses in the Dowsing Machine. All right, so we'll see. Obviously, Blaine, like you said, does get a confirmed knockout. Plus, I don't know how many items are in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight nine, nine, ten, ten eleven. Oh, ten choice short. band trash lunch. Yep. Yeah, and he's eyeing the Zork. Oh, well, the Zork already has 10 damage on yeah, it. Yeah, so. exactly. And, he, and even if it didn't, there's a choice band in Blaine's hand. So yep. so he takes a quick knockout there to end the game. 1-1 uh, now in this set. Very close. Honestly, probably a 50-50 matchup here for both yeah. these players. It, it gets back to what I was saying at the beginning. It's like, I thought, sort of looking at the two decks against each other, I thought it was kind of hard to sort of determine who would actually have the lead because there's sort of a lot of ways the matchup can go depending on who ends up playing what. But... Okay, I guess that's kind of proven itself here. Something else to be uh, cognizant of for both these players. Drapagarb wins, uh, but it wins kind of slow. Yes, very much so. <laughs> like you said, it wins by really grinding your opponent down. And there is less than 10 minutes left. So John has the potential to win quickly because Zora can just, you know, one, two, three game. Yeah. Uh, but Blaine is going to kind of have to play a little bit of a slower game. Maybe deprive John of the ability to do that as opposed to trying to yeah. be the aggressor himself. Yeah. And he'll be he'll, he'll be perfectly happy to do that. I mean, obviously he would rather have the win, but the tie still guarantees him for day two regardless. Yeah. So he's not going to be massively upset at uh, taking the tie here if he if that is what ends up happening. Yeah, and if I'm John, I need to start good and stay fast. So we'll see. Starts with one basic. Lane starts with one basic. Setting out their prizes, and we are going to game three here. Yeah. A handshake, and John starts with Wah. Oh, okay, that's pretty which cool. Which is interesting, but unfortunately, it will likely not have too much of an effect in this matchup, as Blaine does not have any Pokemon that 
have uh, all of Blaine's ability Pokemon a psychic type. A psychic, right. <laughs> it actually only hurts John because it prevents John from using his one copy of Shaman EX. <laughs> So and it prevents him from using the eggs too. Yeah, that's actually pretty funny. Uh, uh, terrible, but also pretty funny. Oh. He is forced to just play Skyfield and Delinquent and pass. And Blaine will just attach and big wheel. <laughs> so this so, is definitely not how John thought this was gonna go. Uh, this isn't how I thought it was gonna go either. Yeah. It's like Blaine could literally just take the game here by attaching double colorless and announcing an attack twice. Oh, okay, John did draw an egg. John draws an egg, but that's one of the worst Pokemon to draw right now. Yeah. He does have a Chorus in his hand, but that's not going to do anything. Yeah, he no. does have VS Seeker as well, but Blaine has 10 cards, so... Yeah, John just passes. There's uh, Trubbish, Trubbish, Sudowoodo, double colorless. I mean... In Actually, is, is there even is there an argument that Blaine shouldn't have mentioned this Pokemon because oh well, jo John draws the Bridget anyway. John rips Bridget to stay alive. So this game is not over yet. No. John manages to escape the jaws of the Donk, and with this Bridget, he is eyeing that classic double Zerua Trubbish, and he does take those yeah. and. Maybe it might be a bit too early to say this, but I think with that, the tie is almost like 95% going to happen at this point. There's uh, both players are set up well enough to the point where I don't really think there's going to be anyone taking enough knockouts in succession to take all their prizes that quickly. Yeah, Blaine can just force you know a bunch of 90 X's to deprive John of the ability to even if John you know draws and attacks, it'll still take five six turns to yeah, do this. So very much so. Looks like there was a Verse Seeker for an end there as well. Blaine, at, say, Blaine at the very least has the KO on the Wobbuffet, so there's that. Oh, actually, um, in all fairness, uh, there is one thing that uh, it get, does get shot off by Wobbuffet, that is a Blaine Pseudo Widow. So right now, if John wanted to, he could bench a bunch of stuff. He could. Yeah. I mean, he wouldn't because it makes no sense, but he could. <laughs> right. Yeah. And. So he oh. attaches to the Trubbish and knocks out this Wob. And if I'm John, I got to just do my best, take as many prizes as I can. He's got abilities live now. A pitch double egg and maybe a supporter. Maybe a. Oh, he's got a chorus in hand. Okay. So I'm not sure what he wants to get rid of. Dang a Guzma, just a car, a third card to burn. Yeah, it's also a Guzma is one of those cards where if you find a Versica later on, you want to be able to actually use that Versica to get Guzma because it's almost always, you know, has its own utility in different stages of the game. Yeah. <coughs> and that is going to be his choice, yeah, Guzma. And uh, what, what happened there? I think they're just eyeing. John is just making sure he knows. What he's taking. Yeah. I think Blaine was maybe just counting or something, but yeah. John is going to likely double prop and discard them both with this Ultra Ball. There's the first Zork. Mm -hmm. He can single prop and use communication to put the egg back in the deck. Yeah, he can as and well. That's pretty the good. Second Zork up and running. Uh, he could even dig for a KO to turn on the Drampa. That's like, uh, he would need to find a replacement stadium, but. Uh, it's well within the realms of possibility. He does have the dowsing with the exactly. double prop, so he can do that. And then he can attach the double. He can attach the choice band. He could find another Zork. And then he can chorus for at least five. Yeah, this is a really good turn from uh, from John, actually. And uh, he actually, it's like he's going to go for Shaman. Just go mega, mega aggro here. Just really make sure he can get the KO on the tap on the Drampa. Or no, maybe just go for Tapu Lane instead. Oh, I'm just going to go Sycamore. Sycamore will draw more cards than Chorus here. Chorus only draws six. Sycamore will draw seven. Yeah. It's interesting. Some of the Zorks we saw earlier were running Juniper. Yep. John is opting for Zorok's old friend Sycamore. Yeah, clearly, clearly, clearly some favoritism at play here. Yeah, an interesting aesthetic choice yep. for sure. 
There's a field blower, there's a double, there's a Lele, a Shaman, but not a lot of cards he can just burn. No, it's unfortunate actually. That means he might be a little bit short of the KO. He would need, he has one egg and discard pile. One of them went back into the deck with the communication. Yep. So he would, uh, he needs seven on the bench to take the KO. There's trade a trade. Once. There's a red card and a ditto. Okay. So he needs, get the choice band, so he'll need still three more. Yeah, yeah. With seven, and he opts to just attack. He is not going to go. Oh, the pseudo widow again. Oh, the pseudo, yeah, that's right. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah, no, he wasn't able to find garbotoxin, so no chance of benching more than four. So it was just sitting there. Yep. Just waiting. <laughs> So now there's a chorus uh, again for seven here. We are also coming down to the wire here. There's under a minute 30 left. Like we talked about, I doubt there's any way that this finishes. Blaine has taken a knockout, but I mean, it's just one little Wobbuffet. Yeah, there's uh, no, no way of really going about this, which means that uh, one of them would... Uh, Manage to take all the, all the prizes and win one turn, unless again one of them plays two supporters in one turn and gets <laughs> gets a game loss. It's the only it's the only win condition really here. That that is certainly one of them. <laughs> Hopefully, obviously, both these players are very experienced. Doubt that they have these sort of errors. We see a berserk for one eighty. Still not enough, obviously. Nope. We're going to be a little, just that little bit short. And this is one of the problems, and this is one of the reasons why Jampa Garb did fall a little bit out of favor. It can win these grindy games, but you're always having to go two shots on Zoroks. You have to you know, go Choice Band, Righteous Edge, and then and then Choice Band Berserk to get KOs, and that's just kind of really tough going. John will red card Blaine down to four. He does have a Field Blower, but I wonder if he just holds it because he'll knock out this Jampa anyway. So yeah, I think so. He doesn't really get much benefit from it, as far as I can tell. Um, but time is going to be called now, and uh, like, yeah, there we go. I think they've. They're, they're I think they it. realize. Yep. Yeah, they realize it's a tie. They realize there was no way that was going to finish. Maybe if there was like five, ten more minutes, it could have. Yep. But um, mm -hmm. there, uh, there was no way that was good. No. So, pretty good set though, honestly. Yeah, yeah two, it was two good games. Um, Showing really both of these decks that they're sort of what they can really accomplish if they're allowed to sort of set up and sort of uh, do w what they're meant to do. Yeah, game one we saw John. It's Blaine was just trying to establish that control over him, and and John was just not having it. Yeah, he got over the top of him, and then in game two, Blaine was able to finally take control there. Yeah. but and it just it takes so long. Yeah. So Drampa relies on winning that game one usually. Yeah, it does. Um, and also, uh, Blaine in that game making really great use of the Oricorio. Yeah. Like, you know, so often you see it's only in there for like you know these lower HP decks, so maybe for like Night March or Vesper Quen. But yep. even in other matchups like against Zorok, it does have its own utility uses. Like there, we can just you know take you know, free prizes in one yeah. turn and just blow a game out. Yeah, he knocking out the Trubbish is is what locked John out of game two. So that was good by him. Mm -hmm. Um, unfortunate that we didn't get to see the Sigilyph GX. Yeah. Don't know what that's for yet exactly, but yeah. uh, both these players tie, so they will still be locked for day two because of the 19-point exactly. rule, even if they lose next two. But uh, I imagine that they'll still win a, a <coughs> you know, one of the next two at least, both very good players. Because we tied, um, we will not have a winner's interview. Yep. So stay tuned. We'll be back for round eight here shortly.